TV Grace presents the inexpressible words of God, the gospel of grace on the lips of Jesus Christ men. Abba Father. Today's topic is the evidences of the coming of the Lord. The evidences of the coming of the Lord. You know that prophetically, uh, already all theology and future events, those that I've read about, about 30 years ago, I used to read them books, future events, and all of that theology has established that already the time has been fulfilled in which Christ has returned, but they don't see him. They haven't seen that, but they say he must have already arrived. In fact, there was a Jew, a rabbi that knows that the Lord has arrived. And he heard on the radio that Christ was here and he came and I was an hour. I sat down an hour with him and he said, I need to come and visit you and touch you because I've traveled the world looking for him. So since they've said he's here, I came here to see if it's true. So it is to say that all of the evidences indicate that the Lord must have already arrived. The problem is that they are waiting for the Lord up in a cloud. They are waiting for a mystical event where everyone sees them arrive and chaos is manifest. So then, if it's that way, then he cannot appear as a thief in the night. And Paul says that the first apparition is as a thief because he comes hidden. The thief hides to steal. So then, the evidence, the evidence is that he's coming with a physical body like yours or like mine's. He has to come that way because in order to walk and live and speak and preach, well, he has to come in a body. Now, that body, I tell people that that uh, uh, mock me. They call me a blasphemer because I accept that I am the man Christ Jesus. Well, I say, okay, well, it isn't me. For you, it isn't me. Well, look for him in your church. Perhaps he's there right? Because he's already supposed to have appeared as a thief. He's, he is hidden. And I tell the Baptist, look for him at your church. Perhaps he's there or in the big churches here in Miami. Seek him there because he's had to have arrived. I may not be him. He may be out there somewhere or seek them. Seek him amongst the Mormons. So among the Catholics or among the Jehovah's Witnesses or the Adventists. No, because I'm saying for them, I'm speaking with a public that's looking at me via internet that they think I commit blaspheme in saying that I am the man Christ Jesus. Because you accept that I am the man Christ Jesus, right? Hey. And I am saddened of, for those weak in the faith that have left us because of that. Those that have left us, I say, well, look for him out there, wherever you've gone to, because they must be evidences. Paul says that when he was to arrive, he calls it the preaching of Jesus Christ, that Jesus was going to come and preach because Jesus in the days of his flesh never preached. He spoke in parables. He spoke historically or he rebuked the Pharisees, but he didn't establish basic doctrines. So for not only your comfort, but for my comfort also, God gives me these apostolic consuls so I can strengthen the things that we say we believe. For an example, let's look to Romans chapter 2, verse 16. Things that you need so that when they confront you, how can you believe that he's the man Christ Jesus? Well, let's take a look. Let's agree. He must have already arrived as a thief because the first apparition, well, the coming is different. 
But the apparition is like a thief. Now the coming, he's coming with all of the saints and we will be raptured together with him in the air. And air means ambient. It ain't air up there somewhere because then you're not going to be able to see him. And it's to come for those that await him, those that uh, have been resurrected, those that are dead in Christ, will be raptured together with those that live in the cloud. Well, we have the first apparition and we have the coming. Now, in the coming is with glorified bodies, but the apparition is the first manifestation that takes place visually to be able to preach well, let's look at Romans chapter 2, verse 16. It says, in the day when God will judge by Jesus Christ, the secrets of man, according to my gospel. It is to say that a day was to come where God was going to judge those that are alive, because in order to have secrets, the secrets of men they have to be here on earth in order to judge that. It is to say that that manifestation of the appearance of the man Christ Jesus has to come with the gospel of uncircumcision, not with circumcision, because Paul says here, repeat the verse. Look, it's very important. In the day, Paul waited for a day when God will judge by Jesus Christ the secrets of men. According to what? When he says, according to my gospel, you know that he says that to him was entrusted the gospel of uncircumcision, right? It is to say that that manifestation in which Jesus was to come means you have to look for a man and when you find him, stay where he is. You don't have to stay here, but find it wherever you find a man that's preaching the gospel of uncircumcision. There you have no problems. Listen, and that is for your comfort. So you don't get nervous. Oh, may this be false? Because many have left. Oh, and those people may make you think, man, why did he leave? He, he was here for many years. And now because they say that the apostle is the man Christ Jesus. He got scared and he left. And that may bring fear to you. And you suddenly say, if that is false, you may say that. So these evidences that I give you, these tips, is so that scare you can go through it little by little. Because Paul warned that a day in history was going to come where when the gospel was going to be preached, the gospel of uncircumcision. Well, with that, you are alleviated. Well, let's look now to the second letter of the Apostle Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 6. Letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verse 16 through 18. Let's look at this other evidence, because these are the evidences we have to strength, to strengthen those that doubt. Well, the verse says, what agreement is there between the temple of God and idols? For we are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell with them and walk what? Among them. In order to dwell and walk among them, you have to be in the flesh. It can't be the second manifestation's the second manifestation with a glorified body to dwell and to walk. He says, I will be their God and they will be my people. Therefore, come out from among them. Any church where you're at, if you know he isn't there, it says, separate yourself, saith the Lord, and do not touch the uncleansed and I will receive you. And what is the uncleansed? The blaspheme that is committed the profanity that's committed to treat you as a sinner, prohibiting you, uh, all types of sacraments, those oils they use, uh, that trash the evangelical do, 
those baptism, washing people that are dirty with filthy rags to cleanse their sins. Those ceremonies, that is uncleansed. It says, come out from among them and don't touch the uncleansed and I will be among you. And it says, I will be a father to you. Do you remember? Leave the verse there for a moment, please. Do you remember when Jesus said in the days of his flesh said, call no one father, right? Remember he said, call no one father because there's only one father in heaven. So then Paul dared to call himself father because he begot people with the gospel. But he stood without children because no one believed in him. So it is to say that a third father was going to appear. So that father, it says, I will be a father to you and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. So now notice there's something curious here. And it's that recently I was in a place where a where a pastor asked, and why do you call him father, dad, uh, father, papito? Imagine. So that struck him because he never saw anyone calling and everyone. So there was one in Colombia said, how many children do you have? <laughs> and I said, there are many, there are many. <laughs> Yeah, so notice that that manifestation, for an example, I've always been struck that for many years, even before you call me father, before the ministry begun to call me father, I noticed that my father, my father would tell me, Daddy, father, when can you take me to Puerto Rico? And I would say, why does he call me father? Well, that's a testimony for me. I'm the only person he calls father. My father calls me father. So then it, it is to say that in that manifestation, uh, as you can understand, it says that he will dwell and walk among them. So it has to be a man. I used to told this young man, listen, all right, I'm not the man Christ Jesus. For you, I'm not. Oh, is that you're confused? You you are possessed by demons. You are deceived. Ask God that he would enlighten you. So I told the young man, I told him, listen, when a person is deceived, he is deceived. How is he going to ask to be delivered from something he believes is true? Well, true. You're saying it, that you are deceived. Well, if I am deceived according to what you believe, well, I believe I have the truth. So how am I going to ask God to reveal the truth to me if I feel I'm in the truth? Right? When you try to convince a young man, no, that young lady, it's not good for you, or that man is not good for you, or that lady is no good for you. If he's in love, he says, forget about that. I love her. He's convinced. You're seeing other things he doesn't see. So then I said to the young man, listen, be at peace. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid. You see how calm I am in speaking with you? If I'm not, well, look for him in your church. Perhaps your pastor is the one. Now, if it's your pastor, he can't be preaching about the devil because the devil was destroyed. Oh, and forgive me. And if he preaches that sin is still alive, so then he cannot be because he that was going to appear was coming a second time not to bear sin. So the evidences we have can't be any clearer. Well, we have to have the evidences in order to base it on what we believe and teach. So then all of the theology, all of the theologians, presently there is... Chaos. The date started in 1985. Then they said, no, it's the Jewish calendar, which is in 91. Then they said, perhaps in the year 2000, in the year two, the year 2000, many believers, listen to me closely because this is information I'm giving to you 
I've been giving you because I read. I read when I travel and I hear what they have to say and I like to know where they stand. And every day the nonsense they say makes them more confused. But in the year 2000 in Israel, in Jerusalem, where right now they're at war, there was a series of suicides committed by Christian that believed that Christ was going to appear. They sold their properties. They moved to Jerusalem to be close to Jesus. And it was a disappointment because they were looking, they were looking, listen, up to heaven. They're still looking up to heaven. And they're waiting for a change. What happened? And they would look at their bodies and they were, they stood there disappointed. Disappointed. Because, because notice what Romans 16.25 says. Romans 16.25. Now to him who is able to establish you according to my gospel. Notice what Paul says. He knew there was one that was to come that was going to be able to establish you according to the gospel of uncircumcision. And the preaching of Jesus Christ. Look and notice that it was Jesus Christ which was going to preach. When did you see Jesus Christ preach? He never preached. He came to die for your sins in that first manifestation. So then he died for your sins. And then after that, he says, I will come a second time, but not to bear sins. So then the evidence is, because listen, the confrontations that I am usually against, because I don't have really a lot of time to explain because it's a moment of judgment and you can't really explain everything. And they mock me and they say, how can you say that you are the man Christ Jesus? And I stay there like, wow, I can't. But how have you come to conclude it's painful for me because I feel confronted with things I can't clarify suddenly because I have to look for a Bible. It's, you know, if you run into them in a, in a shopping center or somewhere, you don't have time to look for the Bible. So you feel suddenly with desire of, well, continue thinking the way you want to think. So you leave in a sense humiliated. The only thing that comforts me is that Jesus says, when you see one of the days of the man, Christ Jesus, or the son of man, says he will be mocked and insulted. And what worse humiliation when you cannot really explain? Well, what I do is I don't see anyone. I'm usually locked in my home. All I do is go to places where I have to minister the word and I get to places because I really don't have any desire to go out. I prefer to be home almost every time, but truly not everything is negative. Because listen, one day, Jesus in the day of his flesh, uh, they were mocking him because they said, how do you dare you're the son of God? This is the son of Mary and Joseph, the guy that lives in the corner there, the carpenter saying that he is the son of God. Well, then Jesus felt confronted. Well, he says, well, I know it's difficult when I tell you who I am, but if you don't want to believe in me, well, believe in the miracles and in the things I do in the works because of the Messiah, they said that he was going to do these things and I am fulfilling it. Well, in the same situation when they tell me, uh, you're not the man Christ Jesus. Well, if you don't want to believe, believe in the 30, uh, 40 nations where we're at. And the miracle is that everyone speaks one and the same. Oh, and another miracle that the flesh doesn't support is that all of the men of those churches feel happy to arrive and minister the, the praise and the sowing. And then they say, and now your pastor, the image. And that is very difficult because when the person has belly, he says, no, I want people to see me. 
because he wants to figure, he wants to uh, present his rhetoric and expose how well he speaks because that's natural in men and pastors. All of the churches in the world, those that figure is a man, a leader. But there then is comparison because people will say, oh, I like the way that pastor expresses himself or I like that other pastor because he is very charismatic. But here, nobody figures. What figures is an image. Now they say, oh, I would like to preach because it's true. We love to expose this beautiful revelation. It's precious. It's a joy to be able to explain this word to anyone. But if the beloved is benefited with the image and receive the word, we step aside. That has never been accomplished because you know what it is for so many men to deny themselves, but there is a mystery in that. Not only that they speak one and the same, but there is another mystery that it is one flock and one shepherd. Because it says that Jesus died for the church, not for the churches. It's for one church. So the only way that it can be one church, if it's there is one shepherd. When there are two churches, it's when there are two pastors, one here and one there. But if the same person speaks in all of the churches, then it's one church. It's not many churches because it's only one person speaking. And that is a mystery that has never been achieved in all of the history of the church. So then, uh, this that we've concluded, brethren, I feel very uh, fulfilled and grounded in what we're doing. People think that I do this blindly, looking uh, for attraction or my egocentrism. It's to the contrary. I'm not looking for that. Those that know me know I don't have a need for that. I feel I am... uh, person that's been accomplished, complete. What more than all the churches we've reached around the world because it is a lot easier for me not to say what I say because what I say brings about persecution. If I was someone interested in vanity, in in finances, I'm not going to say that I'm the man Christ Jesus. That's going to bring about persecution. People are going to leave, as many have left. There are people that have been here 10 years. But the parable of the workers of the vineyard, it's fulfilled. That ones got here at 8 in the morning to leave at 4 p.m. And others arrived at 3 p.m. Dozers, right? Dozers that get there at 3 to work till 4. And they were both paid one and the same. There are people that get here last And they say, oh, I knew he was Jesus Christ, man, because no one could speak the way he speak unless he were. And those that got there at eight, leave at three o'clock, they are ready to be rewarded and they leave at 3 p.m. What a poor business transaction. You know what it is to start at eight, leave at three when you are almost about to be rewarded? Wait just a little more. As the song says, Espera un poco, un poquito más. Right? Why so many truth? And then all of a sudden. (laughs) So then you know what I've been doing here in these 30, 35 minutes? I've been mediating. It says that Jesus Christ man is a mediator between God and man. So I've been mediating between God and you. So there is only one mediator. Remember when we were religious, we used to think that Mary was the mediator. So then the Virgin Mary, you would speak to her preciously, very beautifully, and she would go to the son and then the son would go to the father. And father, you know, we must help this family. (laughs) But there is only one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. Amen? (laughs) 
So therefore, I close with these words. Uh, there are two manifestations in the coming of the Lord. The first one is the earthly apparition. He needs a body in order to bring to light the hidden things from darkness, to be able to explain the gospel of grace, to be able to establish you with the gospel of the uncircumcision. Because it says that that day, someone will come that will confirm you in a physical body. There are people that tell me, well, if you're Jesus Christ, heal me right now. Touch me. Say, don't tempt the Lord. Listen, if I trip over those steps, it's going to hurt me. I'm in flesh. They expect Jesus to be a, a thing of miracles and situations. No, if I don't watch closely and I trip there and break my leg, they're going they're going to cast have to cast it up the way they would do to you. In the flesh, we are all the same as Jesus Christ. If they smacked him, he, it hurt. And if they hurt him, he would bleed. You remember when Jesus Christ said that the flesh profits nothing? He was speaking of his flesh. But now he says, the spirit gives life. He says, the words that I speak are spirit and their life. You know, if you set your eyes on me, you're going to say, no, he cannot be the man Christ Jesus. No, there's something that I don't like about him because you're looking at me in the flesh. Now close your eyes and listen. And if you close your eyes, you don't see the flesh. You're going to hear the message. You're going to say, that is the message that the man Christ Jesus is going to bring. But you can't put your eyes on me. If you put it on me... There are people that continue staring at me. I don't get close because of that, because then they get to know me and suddenly they see something of me. Perhaps I ate a lot. That day I was very hungry, imagine. Or something, something can happen, right? Or suddenly something that disappoints you. Perhaps you're accustomed to one thing and I do it a different way. No, no, no. No, I don't like this. So then, people, don't you see that the weak in faith, what he looks at is the flesh? The weak in the flesh are folks that judge by what their eyes see. That is where weakness lies. Now, the spiritual, the mature, always has his sight in what is written in the evidence. And that applies in all things. For an example, you say, how do I feel? Well, then if you work with your feeling, so then they're going to deceive you, your feelings. You can't live by what you feel. You have to look for other convictions. Listen, today I enjoy the best days of my life. Why? Because I am dying to self. I am more than dead. Listen, I don't worry about anything. I don't worry. It is unbelievable that at this point, I'm in a situation where nothing. Listen, when you have firm convictions, you do not defend yourself. If they're speaking about you at the job, you're at peace because what's mine, I'm a hammer. And if I'm a hammer from heaven, nails will rain. Don't defend yourself because defending yourself, what it does is worsens the situation. Listen, I'm not destructible. Listen, because what I preach, not for me, because in flesh I'm destructible. But the concepts that God has revealed to me are indestructible. There is no one that can come against this ministry that will survive. No one. And, and if you... And those that hear me via internet are in this ministry and you have these convictions. Everything that is yours, no one can touch. You are firm and your convictions are going to give you longevity and tranquility. Yes, because that is the material you are nourishing yourself with. It says that you will rest. It says that you shall forget your misery and remember it as waters that have passed away. 
waters that have passed away. You're going to live and rest. Listen, there's going to be a mantle over you, a coverage that you feel the angels in the least of things. Yes. The coverage, say the coverage. If you are humble and you are meek and submit to what's written, I guarantee that you're going to spend the rest of your life living the best days. The best days. You're going to be able to enjoy at peace that coverage. The angels, the angels, those that confess me before men, the Son of Man will confess him before the angels of his Father. And that is your confession. Yeah.